I grew up in Hoylake on the Wirral near Liverpool. There were three cinemas in the locality and my family were fairly keen cinema goers. But the first time I was taken was when I was age seven and that was to the Walt Disney film Lady and the Tramp. And on that occasion, I was conscious of this beam of light shining from the back of the cinema onto the screen at the front through this great haze of smoke. There was a forest fire sequence, and I remember seeing this orange beam going towards the screen. And my parents were a bit dubious about my interest in cinemas, and they always thought I should pursue a a serious and uh, a stable career. My father was a respected Liverpool solicitor. I think he always rather hoped I would go into that profession. I worked for the Ministry of Defence for many years in engineering, but I always worked part-time in cinemas wherever I happened to be based. Always took a part-time job as a projectionist. It was actually my wife who encouraged me to go into cinemas. She could see that this is what I really wanted to do and maybe she th believed I could also make a success of this. And it was with her encouragement that I actually got cracking. I'd previously been told by a cinema where I worked part-time, uh, I told the manageress there, the, the owner, that I was looking for my own cinema and my wife and I had drawn up a short list of places that we would like to operate cinemas. And the Royalty in Bowness was one of them. And she said, this, this lady, she said, oh, you'll never get that, she says. And, uh, but so many years later, here we are. The Royalty was called the Public Hall when it first opened. It was built in 1926. It actually opened in February 1927. It was designed uh, initially to be a theater, a dance hall, and a cinema. The stall's downstairs floor is completely flat, made of maple, sprung maple floor. And the seats were originally battened together in groups of three or four, and they could be moved down into the basements when dances were held. It always has been open. I don't think it's ever closed. So it's just turned 85 years continuous use as a cinema. The people behind the Wurlitzer projects are really the Furness and District Organ Society. It's a 1927 Wurlitzer cinema organ, so it was designed to accompany the silent films of the 1920s. It started off in Cleveland, Ohio, in, in, in America, and then it came to England in 1934 to a cinema in East London. And then from the mid-70s, it, it was re, you know, removed and in storage until we started restoration in 2007. The world was in a terrible state when we first found it. It was um, in storage in a semi-derelict building in Scotland. Um, there were rats, there were dead pigeons, there was no electricity, so we had to set up uh, arc lights and a generator to get it out of the building and all the components, there were four van loads of, of pieces that we had to bring back to our workshops here in Cumbria. It took a long time to restore, much longer than I expected, um, about five years of work um, in our spare time, uh, gradually refurbishing individual components and then sticking them back together. And then it took about a year to reassemble on site here at the Royalty. Well, the Wurlitz is quite a complicated piece of, of machinery, really. In addition to the, the console that people can see up here in the auditorium, there are two rooms below the stage containing all the pipes and the bellows and all the sound effects for the silent films. There's a blower which provides air under pressure to blow the pipes and a relay which controls the signals from the keyboard to, up to each individual pipe. So it's quite a complicated piece of kit. It's a 1927 theatre and the organ dates from 1927 too. So they, they both um, started off in the silent era and uh, the organ is just the right size really for a theater of this size. So they suit each other very, very well. 
Uh, there was a time in the 20s and 30s where every respectable cinema had a, a cinema organ to accompany the films. Uh, this is now the only Wurlitzer in a working cinema in Europe. Everywhere I go, I hear people talk about the soulless multiplexes, and we are certainly the antidote to those. The cinemas have ambience. We try to give people the personal touch. We talk to people. We give them personal service as best we can. I think it is important to keep independent cinemas because they do offer a different experience from the, the multi-screen national chains. I think if it was left to them totally, it would become a very bland and uh, mercenary experience. The independent cinema owners, we all care. We, we are passionate about film, we are passionate about cinemas, and we all do believe in doing it right and not just making a fast buck. And I think we, we are setting the standard, really, I believe. <laughs>